Hey everyone, welcome to Find Your Flow. Today we have an awesome glute strengthening practice. So this is amazing if you've been working from home a little bit more, if you want to counteract any effects of sitting, and we're gonna wake up this space in a way that feels awesome. So hop on the mat and I'll meet you there. So hopping right to it. We are starting by lying down on the ground. Make sure you have your lovely, comfortable position in Shavasana that works well for you. So you might let the legs out long or the feet can come wide with the knees bent. If you do have any lower back discomfort, this is often a lovely alternative. Take whatever props you need as always and start to get lovely and snuggled in. Feeling the support from the earth beneath you. And find a little more space if the arms are down by your sides, if they're right here near your torso. Can we invite a little more room in between the side body and the under part of the arm? Let the armpits breathe. And taking a lovely breath in. And a breath out. And just keep breathing. Something that we always, always, always do. But this time, can we set this intention to breathe consciously and with awareness? And scanning through the body from the head to the toes, going past all of the space in between, asking yourself if there's any tension apparent anywhere. It's so easy to hold tension in the physical body without even realizing. Perhaps we came to the mat quite tense, in a bit of a hurry, trying to squeeze in a practice when we maybe think we don't have time. So whatever the reason, for this tension, just notice it where it is in the body and consciously soften and release. And see as we do this, can we perhaps slow our breath down a little bit, just a little? So if we're breathing quite short and shallow, perhaps we elongate that inhales and our exhales by one two or three counts, whatever's available. And just letting go of everything that's happened so far today, whatever you brought with you to the mat, and thinking about why you chose this video. And if it's to get a big toned booty, then awesome, and <laughs> you're in the right place, but can we shift our perspective of this slightly? And rather than working on the body, can we work with the body? So, helping to support the rest of our body parts, joints, muscles, by strengthening a few particular areas that we're going to be doing today. Looking at the overall picture. And... Uh, Overall, just really thinking about caring for ourselves, loving ourselves no matter how we are, what we are, and providing as much support for this home that we live in, that we call our body. By practicing mindfully and with care. Finding three more breaths. conscious breath with us into our movement as we reach the hands and the arms all the way behind us. You can open the eyes or keep them closed here. Just reaching away through the heels and the fingertips for one long breath. Exhale, releasing, taking 
the left wrist with the right hand and just shimmying that upper body over towards the right side slightly. And then shimmying the left leg over towards the right and if we can, crossing it over. So we're feeling some lovely length through our left side body, almost like we're in a banana shape on our mat. One more breath here before shimmying back to centre, taking the right wrist with the left hand, upper body comes over to the left side. And then the right leg either comes close or crosses over the top of the left leg, finding a little banana shape, taking lovely deep breaths in and out. And floating back to centre, hugging both knees up and in and just rocking from side to side. Coming all the way back, hugging the right leg up and in, sending the left leg long and curling the forehead towards the knee, rounding through the spine, breathing in. Breathing out, option to bring the left foot to the ground if this is too much on the hip flexor for now, just breathing wherever we are. And then everybody reach the right leg long towards the sky. If we have a yoga strap to hand, we might like to use it around the middle of the foot. Or we can bring the hands to soften on the hamstring, the calf, if we have space. Maybe coming up towards the foot, but really making sure that, firstly, that the lower part of our back and our glute isn't curling off the mat like this, keeping it really rooted down. And also noticing the shoulders. And if we've created some compression and tightness here by muscling into this, can we invite this softness and release our hands as much as we need to. Keeping the toes lifting towards the face, finding one more breath here. Before taking hold of the back of the leg with just the right hand. So bending the knee nice and generously in towards the right armpit, finding half a happy baby pose. So keeping the right foot kicking towards the sky, the hand can soften maybe on the hamstring, the back of the calf, the ankle space, the outer edge of the foot. Again, just being mindful of the lower back, keeping it rooted firmly, finding one more breath here. And then releasing, hugging the left leg in, taking the right leg out, curling the forehead towards the knee, taking a lovely breath in and out, kicking the left leg towards the sky, toes towards the face, find the space and listen to where it is today. Keeping everything soft. One more breath here. Before bending the left knee in towards the armpit, taking the left hand, keeping this knee nice and wide. So if it's coming towards the centre of the chest, really taking it out a bit wider. And again, softening the hand wherever it falls most comfortably. So if we're finding this tightness and creating this tension, maybe taking our hand a little bit too far, don't be afraid to let go. There's no judgement here. Find your own practice at your own pace. One more breath. So releasing, bringing the soles of the feet together as we open the knees out nice and wide. Being aware of the lower back space and if it's arching off, can we tilt our pelvis back so that the lower back can come down towards the ground? And everybody taking their hands to the back of the head and neck space, just supporting this area. And as we keep the elbows nice and wide, breathing in, breathing out, we'll lift our head and gaze forward slightly and then take the upper body and the shoulders off the mat. So if we're just cranking in the neck here, try and keep it an extension of the spine and think about lifting the shoulders a little bit more. Starting to find this connection to our centre, breathing in, breathing out, releasing, nice. Using your breath to lift back up, keeping the elbows wide. Lower back down towards the ground and releasing once more. Nice. This time keeping the shoulders lifted as we reach the arms forwards. And then taking the hands either side of the legs, floating the left hand down to the left side, 
right hand down to the right, tuning into those obliques, just walking from side to side. Right, we're stroking our back across our mat as we do our little shimmy left to right. Keeping the shoulders lifted, take the tension away from the neck. Make sure we keep breathing here. And come one more time to each side. And then release, hug the hands to the hamstrings, curl the chin towards the chest and start to roll up and down. Finding all fours whenever you're ready, table top. But take as many rolls as you want to here, which is waking up the spine, having a little bit of fun. And when we come to find our all fours, we'll plant our wrists beneath our shoulders, knees beneath our hips. Spreading through the fingers, reaching down through the tops of the feet as we curl the tailbone down, lift the spine, drop the gaze, cat pose, breathing fully. And then lifting the tailbone, rolling through each vertebra of the spine into the head lifts, cow pose. And just finding this fluidity, exploring and experiencing this cat and cow exactly as it is today, not comparing it to yesterday or how it might be tomorrow. Nice, one more time. Floating back to our neutral spine in centre, tucking the toes under, walking the hands forward and really pressing through the palms actively as we send the tailbone high downward facing dog. Our first one, so keep it nice and soft. If it feels good to pedal the heels, then do so. But mainly, can we keep this bend, this softness in the knees, growing a little taller through our spine? And then rolling our weight forwards, curling through our angry cat, shoulders float over the wrists into our plank pose, knees lifted or lower them down to the ground, choose where you are right now. Keeping our weight shifting forwards as we float the elbows behind us, slowly come down to the earth. Taking the feet wide, hands off the mat, planting into the fingertips as we lift the heart space forwards, Rise into a cobra, keep it a little lower this first time, and then release to the ground. Planting the palms by the ribs, pressing all the way up into our plank pose, and then sending the hips high, downward facing dog. Finding one breath in, and as we breathe out nice and slowly, float the knees down to the ground. Notice how the weight shifts as we do this. And coming back to our tabletop all fours, we'll keep the left leg bent, but kick the heel towards the sky. Nice. And keeping this heel lifted, I'm just going to pulse or bob this heel up and down, up and down, up and down. This is a really small movement, wanting to keep our pelvis space nice and level. So if we're kind of going a little bit skew if, can we keep this? Lovely shelf almost. And just keeping our glute muscles and all of this space around the hamstring as well nice and active as we breathe. And pause for five, four, three, two, one. Stepping the left foot all the way forwards. Tucking the back toes under as we lift the back knee off the ground. Fingertips on the earth, lift onto any support if you want to. And taking our right leg a little bit wider so we have a lovely wide stance on the ground. Bending the back knee, we'll root down to rise up to standing. High lunge, floating the fingertips, softening the shoulders. And keep this back knee quite soft, we'll keep sending away through the back heel. Taking a breath in and out. And then straightening through the front leg, we'll reach the palms together up and overhead and releasing nice. Four more times. Moving slow and controlled, just finding our balance, connecting to the strength and awareness in our lower body. And 
after you've finished your fifth, coming back to our high lunge for one breath and then planting the palms either side of the front foot. Stepping the left leg back into our plank pose, knees lifted or lowered, elbows float behind as we come down to the ground. Fingertips come off the earth, tenting the palms, lifting the heart forwards, cobra. And releasing, keeping this length in the back of the neck as we rise into our plank. Send the hips high, downward facing dog. Just warming up the body here, breathe. Nice and slowly floating the knees down to the ground. into our all fours, lifting the right leg off the ground, keeping the right knee nice and bent, hips level, and then kicking that heel towards the sky. It's not a big movement. Nice. Breathe and keep pressing away through the palms, lifting out of the shoulder space. Pulsing for five, four, Three, two, one. Stepping the right foot forwards, lifting the back heel off the earth, coming onto the fingertips, keeping this long spine and taking that left foot a bit wider, bending the knee as we rise. Strong high lunge, reaching the fingertips, rooting through the front foot, softening the toes, taking a breath in and out and then lengthening the front leg reaching the palms together and releasing nice four more times connect to this smooth calm breath that we cultivated at the beginning of our practice let it lead the way nice and whenever you finish come back into your lunge find one more breath before framing the front foot, planting the palms, stepping back, plank pose, this time sending the hips straight towards the sky, downward facing dog, pedaling through the heels. So we might like to stay in our down dog or bring the knees down nice and wide on the mat, toes coming to touch and sitting back in a child's pose. Choose your own adventure wherever you are, really make the most of it. Explore something new, even if you've done this pose a thousand times. Nice, and everybody meeting in down dog. Take your time to arrive there. Walking, stepping or hopping the feet forwards into a fold, feet hips distance apart. Crown of the head releases. Bending the knees as we sway gently from side to side. Arms really heavy. Floating back to center. Next inhale, lifting up halfway your flat back. Exhale, release, rooting down to rise all the way up to standing. Reach for the sky. Fingertips float high. Palms come together at the heart as we send our sitting bones behind us. And imagine we're sitting in a chair. So bending the knees, keeping the weight spread through each of our toes, our heels. Noticing if the knees are splaying in or out. Can we keep them over the toes as we connect to this strength and create a look of fire in the lower body? Find of your breath here. An option to lift off the heels onto the toes, sit back a little lower. Ooh, notice the pelvis space. Is it rocking back or forwards? Can we find the space in the center? Remember that mill pond analogy. Wherever we are, finding one more breath. Everybody bringing their heels down as we step the right leg back nice and wide. Bring the stomach down towards the thigh. Fingertips float behind, airplane lunge. Keeping this length, finding this long line from the tailbone to the crown of the head, all the way through the spine, through the neck. Softening the toes. Option to lift the front heel off the ground for our final couple of breaths. And then stepping back, 
chair pose. One breath here. Before left leg reaches back, nice and wide stance, airplane lunge. Keeping the toes soft, sending away through the back heel. An option to lift onto the front toes for our final couple of breaths. Feel everything that's firing. Take a lovely breath in. And as you breathe out, step into your chair and fold forwards. Just pedal through the knees. Nice. And take a breath in to lift up halfway, finding your flat back. And a breath out to fold to the ground. Planting the hands, stepping both feet back, straight into downward facing dog or child's pose. Finding two more breaths, wherever you are. And then coming to meet in an all fours tabletop. We have a couple of options here. We're gonna do the, the kick up leg pulses again, but we can do them from our all fours, like we know and love, or hopefully love, or we can send one leg out and then the other. And we're going to start with our left leg. So lifting the left leg off the ground, we can do this from a high plank. Choose where you are, start whenever you're ready. Keeping the weight shifted forward slightly, shoulders over the wrists if we're in our high plank. Or all fours. Nice, pulsing for five, four, three, two, one. Step it up, one is lunge, framing the front foot with the fingertips and then rising, keeping our back leg a little bit wider. As we come into our lunge this time, one time only, lengthening the front leg, reaching the palms together. And as we bend the front leg, hands come to the ribs, we spiral them out, pivoting the back foot to the ground. Open the arms wide, warrior two. Take a nice breath in and out. Soften the shoulders. We find a bit more space between the earlobes and the shoulders before sending the left hand down the left leg. Keep it reaching forwards, all the way forwards and back. Breathe into the space in the side body. Floating back, warrior two. And then, you guessed it, straighten the front leg, bring the palms together up and overhead. Four more times. Reach a little taller, a little higher. And then releasing, nice. Really feel the support from the ground beneath you through all four corners of both feet and come back to your warrior two when you're ready. We will meet here, pivoting off the back foot, framing the front foot and stepping back into our plank pose and lowering down slowly to the ground, finding a cobra. This time, hands can stay out wide or we can explore palms near to the rib cage. As we lift the heart forward, maybe we lift a little higher and softening, floating back up into our downward facing dog or child's pose. Choose your own adventure today. Finding two more breaths here before meeting in all fours. Same thing on the other side. So choose, are we in our tabletop? Or are we in our plank pose? Where are we working today? Again, it might be different to where we worked yesterday or where we might work tomorrow. So just be really present with yourself. Listen to your energy. Nice. Five, four, three, two, one. Woohoo! Stepping the right foot up, nice wide stance in our runner's lunge, finding length and rooting down to grow from our sturdy foundation, high lunge. Lifting the palm, straightening the front leg. As we release, hands come to the ribs, spiraling out, warrior two. 
Maybe rooting down through all four corners of both feet. Thighs rotate away from each other externally. Really feeling some purpose through the arms all the way to the fingertips. And then sending the right hand down the right leg. Reaching it forwards, up and back as we rise. Reverse warrior. Taking a lovely long breath in and out. Floating back, warrior two. Straightening the front leg, palms reach up and overhead. Four more times. Keeping this front knee bending over the front ankle, make sure we don't come too far or too back. And I always lose count, I'm a terrible counter. Whenever <laughs> you come to five, just float back to your warrior two. Pivoting on the back foot, we'll come all the way down and step into our downward facing dog or child's pose right away. And if you're in child's pose, make your way to downward facing dog. We'll meet you there. Walking, stepping or hopping the feet forwards into a fold. Rooting down through the feet, inhaling, lift up halfway your flat back. Keep this length through the spine and the neck. And releasing down, rooting all the way towards the sky, reaching the fingertips wide. Taking a lovely breath in and out. Coming to step wide on your mat. Turning the feet out. And notice I have my legs this wide, but if you're taller than me or shorter than me, your stance could look totally different. So it's really about making it work for you. And you'll know that as soon as we come down, if something doesn't feel right, to just chop and change. So I invite you to explore that. But turning our toes out and noticing as we did in our warrior two this external rotation through the thighs so they're coming away from each other rather than the knees collapsing in they're tracking over the feet and the toes again like we did in our chair pose so we're reaching the hands all the way for the sky and then softening the knees softening the elbows feeling the weight spread through all four corners of both feet. We really explored this rooting and this grounding today. So connect to that, connect to the strength, the stamina, resilience we've built in our lower body. Maybe we drop a little lower. Everybody making sure you're smiling and breathing. Nice. And releasing the arms, floating them over to the right side as we lengthen the left leg and then reach for the sky. Imagine we're painting a rainbow coming over to the left and to the right, keeping it down nice and low as the fingertips maybe sweep the floor. One more time this way. And then in the opposite direction. And maybe your gaze travels with your fingertips towards the sky, round and down. One more time. Nice, then coming back to center. Bringing the right forearm down onto the right thigh. And notice if we instantly are dumping a lot of our weight in this right leg, keeping it nice and even as we find some open twist, left hand for the sky, really finding the spiraling in the rib cage and releasing twice more. to the other side, left hand down, right hand reaches. Notice where your attention is here. Coming all the way back to center, goddess pose. Wiggle the fingertips, feel alive in the arms as well as the legs. I know they're talking to you right now. So take your attention away. Think about your intention for this practice, either staying here for five more breaths or 
exploring light pulses, bobbing the hips up and down. Nice. One more breath. And then lifting. Oh, taking a nice exhale out of the mouth. Heel toe and the feet together and just shaking the legs. Giving them a really, really, really good shake. If you want to have a little dance, have a little dance. Get the blood flowing all around the body. And whenever you're ready, come to stand in your mountain pose. Feet hips distance apart. Keep the knees nice and soft. Finding a breath in through the nose and this time out of the mouth, just sigh it out. Two more times. Once more. Feel what you feel here. Then curl the chin towards the chest. Nice and slowly roll down into our forward fold. Bend the knees. Hug an opposite hand to opposite elbow. This way, from side to side. Coming to centre, bringing the hands down. As we step back, everybody, just come into Balasana, child's pose. Knees wide, toes together. Softening the forehead down, as always, taking what support you might need underneath the head or between the hips and the heels. Can you allow yourself to completely soften here? Really use this as the resting pose. Bend in the elbows as much as you want. Maybe we use the back of the hands to rest the forehead on as just a little cushion. And maybe we just rock gently from side to side, easing out the hips. Nice, one more breath here. Before slowly making your way to a tabletop. Rolling the tailbone down, just exploring one cat pose, taking a full breath here and then lifting all the way up, cow pose. Keeping this length in the back of the neck before floating to our neutral spine, sending the legs to one side. An option here to lift onto some support. So I'll be sitting on my brick, or block, I should say. If you have a cushion, pillow, towel, anything at all, then feel free to use that. And if you have chosen to come to a prop, bring yourself right to the front so we can keep the integrity from our pelvis all the way through our spine. And coming to Take our legs a little bit wider than normal, but not, you know, super, super, super wide off the mat. Making sure that we're still keeping this length through each of our vertebrae as we turn our ribs and our chest over towards our left leg. And we can bend our knees as much as we like to here, but really keep rising and lengthening as we fold forwards over the left leg. Notice this might not be a really, really big dramatic fold, but that's okay. Rather than bringing our forehead down towards our knee, and I don't know about you, but that instantly creates a lot of pressure on the back of the neck for me and the upper back. So instead, thinking about our stomach down towards our thigh. Inhaling, 
to remind us to find length and exhale, maybe travelling a little lower. Lifting slowly back up and twisting ourselves over to the right leg and folding forwards as we lengthen. My mat making lovely sounds for you there. <laughs> Finding one more breath, keeping it nice and soft and easy before lifting up. Again, option to stay on your prop or lift your weight off as we keep the left leg long, hug the right leg up and in. We have a few options with our twist. We're going to be coming to twist like this with the right hand behind, but we can take the right leg, the right foot over to the other side of the left, or we can bend the left leg underneath our right and find a twist here. And this might push you off your prop slightly, so just Maneuver it if you want to. And hugging the left arm around wherever we are, whichever variation we've chosen, and the right fingertips to the earth. And if we find ourselves sort of slumping back, we can take some support underneath the back hand to help lift us and bridge the gap between our fingertips and the ground. So really make the most of this, inhaling to grow taller. Exhale, explore your twist a little bit more. center. Unravel, send the right leg long, hug the left leg up and in and choose whichever variation of this twist is for you today. Wherever we are, keep the right arm hugging around, left fingertips float behind either onto the earth or our prop. And if the shoulders are creeping up by near the ears, just notice this, soften the shoulder blades down the back body. This isn't just a juicy twist for the centre of the body, also might be finding a really nice release in the hip space and the glute area. So wherever you feel this, there's no right or wrong, just really allow yourself to breathe into this opening rather than resist against or muscle into. Floating back to centre, unravelling. Moving your props to one side for now. Bringing the feet onto the ground and just scoot into the centre of your mat as we reach the arms out in front, curling the chin towards the chest, rolling nice and slowly. Really connect to the centre as we come down to the ground. And as soon as we get there, bringing the feet as wide as the mat, rolling the right thigh out and the left thigh in, windscreen wiper in the knees from side to side, just releasing any buildup of tension. Softening the hips, float three times to each side. You can slow this down if you like to, if this feels great. There's absolutely no rush. And whenever you're ready, making your way back to centre, planting the left foot, crossing the right ankle over the top of the left thigh. We might like to stay here or interlace the hands behind the left hamstring and find our reclined pigeons, so feet are nice and active. And we're just stretching out all of the space that we've worked today. Connect to your breath, find this awareness, this consciousness with every inhale 
and exhale. Maybe we stay down here, working wherever you are. Finding three more breaths. An option for our last couple of breaths to lengthen the left leg towards the sky, being mindful at every point that we don't curl the upper back and shoulders and create compression around the neck, so keeping it nice and soft and releasing. Coming on to the other side, just giving the hips a little windscreen wiper if you want to in between before floating back and planting the right leg down. Left leg comes over. And perhaps we stay here or if this is in your practice, lift up and breathe. Lovely reclined pigeon. Keeping the muscles of the face soft. If you're clenching the jaw, can we release this? If you're furrowing the brow, can we notice? A smile always helps that. Our last few breath option to kick the right heel towards the sky. Might change where we feel this posture slightly, so know if that's for you today. And then coming all the way down to the ground, planting both feet parallel, hips distance apart, rooting the palms down either side of us as we come to explore lifting our tailbone off the earth and peeling the lower back, the mid back and the upper back into our two foot support, rolling all the way down, just finding this dynamic movement. Two more times, keeping this soft, rolling your spine up and down like a wave. Resting and falling. Alright, so whenever you've finished, you can keep the knees bent and take the feet a little wider. Or lengthen the legs out long, coming to our fine, almost glorious, amazing, very important resting posture. Shavasana. Again, if their arms are by our sides, we can, I encourage us to find a little bit more space between the side body and the underarm. As we take all the tension away from our body, imagining the muscle melting away from the bone, I invite you here to check in with yourself and ask how you're feeling right now. Really important, we can often lose touch with ourselves as we're busy caring for other people at home, at work, wherever we are. So really take this time to be with yourself, your breath, and that's it. There's nothing to do here. But simply be in this space. Staying here for as long as you'd like to. Or floating the palms together towards the heart. Acknowledging the divine light in each and every one of us. Sending love, appreciation, 
So much gratitude to our amazing bodies for allowing us to practice today. I thank you for joining me. From my heart to yours. Namaste.